In this video, I'll be covering the basics of the configuration migration for the WatchGuard Firebox. First thing we'll cover is just the overall process, the things you need to know before you get started, regardless of the interface you're using. The next thing I'll cover are really the different management interfaces that you can use to perform this migration. And then lastly, we'll cover the special cases regarding the configuration migration. The individual steps for the different management interfaces will be covered in separate videos. This is really just meant to be an overview. The first thing you need to know is that every Firebox uses an XML file to store all of the configuration changes that you've made. These XML files can be used on any Firebox model, so they're completely portable. Additionally, these XML files do not contain the feature key, certificates, or any management user information. So these things will need to be addressed separately, but just keep in mind that when you do the migration or you're replacing a Firebox in the event of an RMA, the new device will always have the default credentials, so you will need to update those. You might have heard of backup images, and you might see that option in your management interface, but backup images are definitely not the same as the XML configuration file. These are not meant to do migrations because they're similar to a snapshot of a hard drive on a computer. There's a lot more information there, and a lot of those pieces do not convert over when they're loaded onto a device that has a different serial number and different private key information, among other things. The XML configuration file is really what you need, and the nice part about that is the XML files are much smaller than backup images, and they can also be retrieved instantly from the device versus waiting for the entire snapshot of the device and the encryption process to happen that takes place with the backup images. You will need to get a feature key to put on the replacement device. This is the same thing that you would have gotten on the device you're using now. You just need to make sure to get the key for the new device as it has a different serial number on it. So the first thing you should do is get that feature key. This can be done before or during the config file migration, depending on which management interface you're using. You may have to do it beforehand or at the same time you're saving the configuration, but really it needs to be done at one of those times. If you do wait and try to add the feature key after you've saved the configuration, this is gonna create a lot more work for you because when you save a configuration without a feature key, it will disable your subscription services, and a lot of other things may not work. So you'd have to go back and re-enable everything. It's just a headache, don't do it. So there are two ways you can get your feature key. The first method, which is the easiest, is to have the Firebox automatically synchronize to our servers which have the feature key. Within the automatic synchronization process, there's basically two ways to do this. One would be manually invoked. You can perform a feature key synchronization through either the Firebox system manager or the web UI. Or alternatively, if this is a new device with a default config, as in a config that comes straight out of the box or after you've gone through the factory default procedure, before you run the setup wizard, connect the device to a DHCP connection on interface zero. When it's first booting up in that default state, it will call to the servers and automatically retrieve its feature key. So that'll save you some time. The alternative to that is to manually import the feature key. So this would involve logging into the WatchGuard website, searching for the serial number, finding the device, clicking the feature key option, copy pasting the contents of that. Typically you would put that into a text file just for easy reference or import later, but even just leaving it in your copy buffer to paste later can work. This option is required for virtual devices since this is what sets the serial number on those devices. They cannot call home and retrieve a key because they don't know what their serial number is at that point. So the next thing that you need to do is simply get the XML configuration from the old device or a local copy and save it on the new device. In order to do this, there's four methods that you can use. The first option is to use rapid deploy. This is likely the easiest option in most cases since it doesn't really have a dependency on your current management interface. As long as you have a copy of the XML file, 
you can upload that to the Rapid Deploy website. And then when the device is in a default state and it calls home to get that feature key, it can also retrieve the configuration file at the same time and be up and running. There's no need to even log into the device initially or do anything else. It just needs that DHCP external and it calls home and gets the configuration. The only thing to watch out for there is when you upload an XML file for rapid deploy, you need to ensure that the version of that XML is either the same as the firmware version on the replacement device or older than the firmware on that replacement device. If you have an XML file that was built on a newer version than what the device is running, then you must either downgrade that XML using the WatchGuard System Manager Policy Manager application, or you can upgrade the new device to a newer version, and then that device will be able to use the newer configuration. Moving on, the next option is, of course, the WatchGuard System Manager Policy Manager application. This is the typical way that most people do a migration, and this is because Policy Manager natively works with offline copies of XML files. So if you have been using this, you likely already have a bunch of configuration files available that you can use for migration purposes. And Policy Manager will also validate the version upon saving. So if you take an XML file that's newer than what the Firefox can handle, the Firebox will return an error message to Policy Manager saying this configuration file is too new and then you can change the version using the Save as Version option in Policy Manager. You would also need this if you wanted to change the version on any other config files you have, even for use with Rapid Deploy or the Web UI. The next option here is to use the Web UI and this is only available in Fireware version 12.2 and higher. In this version, we added the option to restore or import an existing XML file, but this option is a little bit more limited because it only works with devices that have the same number of interfaces. Usually this would be used for the same Firebox model, but if they're similar enough, for example, a T30 to a T40, it should work fine. So this is useful for things like an RMA replacement where you're getting another one of the same device, but if you were deploying multiple devices that are all the same model, this could work for you as well to migrate a common configuration over to those other boxes. Much like with Rapid Deploy and Policy Manager, you need to make sure to check the version of the config file that you're trying to import. The config file can never be newer than the firmware running on the box. Lastly, we have the CLI option, but this option is far more complicated and generally not used so I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's really more for advanced users that have a server set up and they can do FTP transfers and other things, but uh, there will not be a video made to cover the CLI process, simply mentioning that it exists. And then kind of outside of those four options, we of course have the WatchGuard Cloud interface that can manage Fireboxes, but I'm not going to include this in a future video because it actually has built-in migration for RMA purposes. So if your box dies and you get it replaced with the same model, the configuration is automatically mapped to the replacement device. So there's really nothing you need to do there. So the first use case of configuration migration is when you're changing models. And this doesn't necessarily mean you're moving to a larger box. You can be moving to any other kind of device. Again, these XML files are completely portable, so you can move them onto any type of appliance. You need to, of course, validate the interface configuration. After you import the feature key, it sets the model number of the device. And different devices, of course, may have different number of interfaces, so you need to validate the network configuration on those interfaces. As I mentioned earlier, you definitely need to check the version that the XML was created for. You can easily see this if you use Policy Manager in the lower right corner, it tells you the version. Otherwise, you can open up the file in a text editor, and at the very top, it should tell you the version it was created for. As I mentioned earlier, the XML file must always be equal to or lower than the firmware version of the Firebox you're saving to. The Firebox does not accept XML for a newer version because it doesn't understand the newer features. 
And of course, you want to validate that the device name and the configuration is accurate. If you were moving from one model to another and you had the model number and the device name, it's going to be a bit confusing when you move that over and the new device has the old model number in it. So definitely check that. Beyond moving to a different model of Firebox, this process can also be used for RMAs. It's basically the exact same set of steps. You need to get the feature key on the box, you need to move the XML file over, but in this case, you don't have to activate the new device that you purchased. That's already going to be done during the RMA process. Our customer care team takes care of that. What you need to make sure of beforehand is that you have some kind of copy of the configuration. It's always recommended to make regular backups of your XML file. This can be done using both the WatchGuard System Manager Policy Manager and the Web UI interface. The advantage to using Policy Manager is that it makes regular local copies of your configuration, whereas Web UI does not. You have to manually download a copy of that every time you want to have a local backup. If you can't find any local copies of configurations, you might be able to find something on one of your older support cases, but the attachments don't stick around forever. If you maybe have some backups on another drive somewhere, or you had another management computer that might have had some copies of configuration, just be sure to check everywhere because if you do not have a local copy of your XML configuration file, your settings are lost. There's really no recovering from that. So again, make regular backups of that XML and you'll be able to restore it onto any device, whether it be a new device for an upgrade or an RMA. In the last section here, if you are using any third-party certificates, whether these are for the Firebox web server, for HTTPS content inspection, or for VPNs, you will need to import those onto the new device, assuming you have access to the private key. If the old Firebox, the one you're upgrading from, or the one you're replacing in an RMA, was the device where you did the original certificate signing request, then you will need to generate a new CSR on the replacement device and then go get that certificate signed by the CA, whether it's your internal one or a public one. If this was for a domain that you purchased, they can simply reissue the certificate for the new CSR. This is an expected process for equipment upgrades, so it's normal to submit a new CSR for an existing domain. You will also need to make sure to set any of the certificate options back to the default setting before saving the configuration onto the new device, since the new device has no copy of the certificates that are running on the current device. So you'll need to go and reapply those certificates after you've imported them. If you are using Ike v2 for your mobile VPN choice, then that default certificate that was on the device will, of course, not be there on the replacement. So if you were using that default, then you're going to need to do a redeployment, or you will have to get the default certificate on the replacement device deployed to the client machines. If you were using a third-party certificate for this, then you would simply load that certificate on the new Firebox and you wouldn't have to do anything on the client side. So definitely situational there. And the same is true for SSL VPN. If you're using that, when the clients go to connect to the new Firebox, they will be prompted to download and install a new certificate. So at least this one, you don't have to deploy anything, but the end users need to be aware that they must accept the new certificate or they will not be able to connect. However, if you're not using the WatchGuard branded SSL VPN client and you're using the open VPN client instead, you would need to deploy a new .ovpn file to those clients since that would contain the new certificate. To wrap things up, XML files are portable and you can use them on any Firebox model. The Firebox does not accept any XML files that were made for newer versions of firmware. So if you made a config for 12.7 and you tried to save it on a device that's running 12.5.4, the Firebox would reject it. You either need to upgrade the Firebox or downgrade the XML. 
Remember to make regular XML configuration file backups. You can do this using the policy manager, which does it automatically, or you can use the web UI to download that configuration file. And lastly, when you get the new device and you have to import all of your certificates again, you will need to go through and reconfigure those options and set them to point at the certificate that you imported. For more information on migrating configuration files, please use the WatchGuard technical search.